Hello, St. Luke, St. Luke family, St. Luke friends, Pastor T.C. Johnson, we're here at the St. Luke Christian Church. It's Word and Worship time. Amen. It's uh, Holy Week, and uh, yeah, we've been fasting and praying this week, those who have participated. And it's been a rough week because for some, it's been um, children are on their spring break, and I understand that. Easter's caught us at one of those times. And someone was asking me why Easter moves around. It's because Easter is not necessarily a designated date like Chris, as Christmas is. Easter is um, follows the first full moon, I believe it is, of, of the lunar year. And so first full moon of particular season. So it that wherever that moon is full, then Easter comes, I think, immediately thereafter or yeah, immediately thereafter. So just go Google that why Easter can move from one end of April all the way back to March. But we're here to worship in this Holy Week with our mind on um, the fact of the Master's extreme, the extreme work that he did, the extreme suffering that he went through, as we talked about out of the 27th chapter of Matthew, all the things that Jesus endured as our Savior to be spat upon, spat in his face and and beat and, and, and humiliated the way that he was. And he had the power not to do it, but he did it because we needed a Savior. And that was the way, amen, um, to save, to become. Uh, Calvary is actually, uh, the cross of Christ is actually an altar. And Christ is the Lamb of God who dies for the sin of the world, who satisfies God the wrath of our sins, the wages of sin, uh, are paid by the life of Christ for those who believe and accept him as their Savior. Amen. That's our belief. That's our belief as Christians. So we thank God for you allowing us to come into your, your home. Maybe um, soon we'll be able to be back at worship together after a year. And I know you're ready and some wanted to come back for Easter. <laughs> But um, be patient, be patient. Uh, it's prayer time, and we're going to prepare ourselves uh, for the word uh, through prayer. I want you to gather in your personal and private spaces there in your, in your home or wherever you are. Take time if you're fasting. Take time if you didn't, um, in, or unable, unable to fast. Take time, and let's just um, close out everything else and... Try to focus upon the Lord because uh, when we focus, we're able to penetrate. Amen. When we focus uh, to the presence of God, and when we, it's when we, so we want you to gather those things uh, on your heart, in your mind, those things you want or need the Lord to lay His hands on. I reemphasize that God bless or blesses. Uh, the works of our hands and whatever it is that you need Lord, the Lord to lay his hands on or it may be something that distresses you, sickness or, or whatever it is, grief or whatever it is, bring it to the altar of your heart. For God is a heart-watching God. I think this is an appropriate song. I love it the song, but I think it's so appropriate now as we focus on uh, the dying Jesus who loved us so much that he not just died for us, but was persecuted, was treated cruelly uh, for us and didn't have to do it had, uh, at um, his advantage and at his disposal, 12,000 uh, or 12 legions of angels and all he had to do was say, Lord, deliver me from this agony. The Bible indicates that it was for our salvation. Because he knew God's great love for the image that can uh, house God. We are the only um, creature where God's Holy Spirit can dwell, and therefore God can dwell. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just 
this wall to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. And I just want to thank you Lord say this you saved my soul you saved my soul you saved my soul and I just want to thank you you Lord it just dropped in my spirit and I have to say this part it's for somebody who's able to say you may always out of no way you may away you made away and I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord. You've been so good. You've been so good. You've been so good. And I just want to thank you thank you lord god our father we thank you god god we thank you for being god god all by yourself we thank you for um being able to come to you uh, in the name of jesus we ask father that your will be done um, on earth as is in heaven that your name be glorified in the works of Jesus, the words is Jesus, and the ways of Jesus, God, that your name be glorified and hallowed, God. We say thank you for this another day, Father. Thank you for this another week of focusing on the works, the great sacrifice, the giving that you gave for us, God. And we say thank you now. We ask you to give us the resources necessary for our day-to-day -day, uh, survival to glorify you. We ask that you forgive us for the wrong that we do against you, the sin, God, as we forgive others. We ask that you lead us not into temptation. You know our limits. You know our boundaries. You know where we're weak, God. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from that evil one. For you're the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. God, we pray for those who've been harmed by the coronavirus, those who've lost their lives and lost their loved ones. God, we ask you to lift up, bow down his white tears from crying eyes now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we realize that this nation's uh, racial uh, history, this of uh, racism is on uh, display again this week. At the George Floyd's murder trial, God, I, I pray that you you hold us and keep us and let us come to an understanding and have us learn as a nation, as people see what happened, God, and we we assess ourselves. We ask you, God, as as a people, to hold us and let us learn. Now, Father, I don't know what's on the mind of the children, your children, under the sound of my voice, but I know that you know, and I know that you're able to help heal and deliver in the name of Jesus. God, we ask you to do that. 
Somebody's just praising you, saying thank you for goodness and mercy that I didn't deserve. I'm saying thank you for goodness and mercy that I don't deserve. God, thank you right now. You know, it's a dark and dismal world. There are those still recovering from storm damage, Father. We pray um, that whatever the needs are, you will provide them. And help your people everywhere be able and willing to help those who are suffering from damages in that manner. Father, I don't know what is on the heart of each uh, of your children under the sound of my voice. Father, in the name of Jesus, lay your hand on the heart. Because I know in your hand you can handle whatever the heart is fearing whatever the heart is worried about, whatever the heart have anxiety. God, lay your hand on the heart right now of your children with whatever request, whatever desire. Father, we say thank you. We give you glory. We ask you to bless those who are day by day fasting or those who participate in fasting. And anyway, God, I ask you to bless them to hear your voice. Speak to every heart. We thank you. We give you glory now in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. All right, all right. Listen, we have a short word today. Uh, I'm going to read a few passages, a few scriptures from Luke's gospel in chapter 23. I'm going to read several verses in your hearing. Amen. And we're going to uh, be through for this evening. Um it says in Luke's gospel, it reads in the King James rendering in verse 33 of Luke's gospel through verse um, 43. So 10 verses, 10 verses, it's two actually, but anyway, 10 verses. When they were come, King James, Luke's gospel, 23rd verse, and when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the male factors or other criminals, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, his garment, and cast lots. And the people stood beholding, and the rulers also the derived him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be the Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him, offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a subscription, a superscription, also was written over him, him in letters of Greek and of Latin, and Hebrew, it read, this is the king of the Jews. And one of the criminals, the malefactors, who were hanged, railed at him, saying, if thou be the Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, doest not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when I come into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, or truly I say unto thee, Today shall thou be with me in paradise. Just for a moment, I want to talk about the time when the thief cried, Lord. When the thief cried, Lord. I would not be so concerned that people came to Christ when all was going well. It's not the case, but but certainly it wouldn't surprise you if people came to Christ 
after Christ had corrected a crisis in their life, solved the problem, made a way for them through prayer, through request, through petition. And the Lord worked that thing out in your behalf the way you want it done. It, it wouldn't surprise me using many of the miracles that he performed in the Bible. Um, the hungry fed. It wouldn't surprise me if they cried, Lord. The blind man who received their sight. You would kind of expect them to say, Lord. When he calmed the sea from the raging wind, the turbulence of the sea, the near-death experience, Jesus said, peace be still. We would expect someone to say, Lord. When Jesus laid his hands on the coffin of the young man being carried, the widow's son being carried to his burial site, and he receives life again, it doesn't, it, we would expect that mother to say, Lord. But I call your attention this evening just for a few minutes to another fellow cried loud, Lord. A thief, a criminal who's been prophesied about in Isaiah 56 and 6 or so where Jesus is hung with the transgressors and prays for those who uh, malefactors, those who are Soldiers, those who need him. The, the thief did not cry loud, Lord, because Christ had walked into the jury room as a lawyer and dealt with his case and won. The thief had not been delivered from hunger or sickness. The thief, if you'll pay attention to the text, in, in Matthew and in Luke, when they, their narrative of the crucifixion is read, the writers says that Both thieves, the one on the left and the one on the right, uh, mock Christ. Luke says that only one of them said to Christ, if you be the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other thief, looked over at that thief and said, leave him alone. So many words. Leave him alone. He's an innocent man. We deserve to be here for their criminal activity. They're called thieves, but when you understand the Greek word used for thief, they were strong-armed robbers and perhaps murderers in the process who were worthy of being a uh, capital punishment, but Jesus was innocent. It's when this thief cries, Lord, that I want to lift and you to listen to just for, for a few moments. So if you saw a man uh, walk on the water and quiet in a storm and you went to him and said, Lord, that is understandable. If you were without food, hungry, and a man took two fish, five barley loaves, 
It fed you with some leftover. You, Lord, that's understandable. If your loved one uh, was sick and couldn't get well, and, and the man laid his hands on him, it'd be understandable. You say, Lord, if your body was sick for 12 years and you was losing life, and just was well, able to touch the hem of his garment, and you cried, Lord, that's understandable. If your child had died or was sick unto death, and the man just spoke from where he was and told you to go back there well, and he got home and the child was well, and you cried, Lord, that would be understandable. Look at this thief. He is Nailed on the cross just as the Christ is. He, 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 something has happened to let him know that this one, something different, and may have been, when you read the text closely, from the time they started to uh, attach Jesus to the cross, the Greek implies that he was praying for those who was nailing him in the hand, saying, Father, forgive them. They knew not what they do. He was not resisting, for he knew his destiny. His mm, attitude, his conduct, and his behavior while being hanged on a tree, an innocent man impressed a thief. So much so that the thief defends him and tells another thief, we deserve this, but he doesn't. He, he, his behavior in this crucifying, in this brutal time, influenced a thief. Help me right here, Holy Ghost. Because the... Christianity's behavior, a Christian's behavior, one who follows Christ's behavior ought to be influencing even in bad times. Someone ought to say to you, child of God, every now and then, I don't know how you take that. I don't know how you, how you get along with it. I don't know how you accept that. I don't know how you work that, all, the, all that, that around you. And you ought to be able to look and say, there's something on the inside. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The, 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 when things are going bad all around you and you're still looking to the hill and you still have the joy of Christ, but the, 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 is your, is your, the joy of the Lord is your strength and you're showing through your behavior, attitude, and conduct. Somebody's watching you and asking you, how do you do it? You'll be able to say, do that straight witness. Then I know a man from Galilee. Hallelujah. If you're in sin, he'll set you free. I'm a child of the king, and he holds me. Keeps me safe in the storm, in the pandemic. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's look at this a little closer. So it's not at the great feeding. It's not at the quietening of the storm. It's not at the raising of Lazarus from the dead. It's not at any of the miracles, except a miracle that's not claimed as a miracle because it is a miracle that the master has a method to get out of this mess, but he chooses to stay in it, a miracle. He has the power, he has mm, angels ready and he never uses that. He stays in the pain so we can have a gain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Wait, 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 wait. He, he, when, when the thief cried, Lord, and this is what I want you to look at, he, he didn't look so good. He had nails in his hands. He, he, he had spikes in his feet. But the thief cried, Lord. Blood was screaming down from the wound, the puncture in his side where blood and water came out. The locks of his hair was bloody from where they placed the crown 
on his head and pushed it in. Uh, the, 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 the trails where blood mixed with sweat and mixed with spit. He, 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 he looked doomed and powerless. Looked useless and no good. But something about his behavior, his conduct, and his attitude influenced, influenced, influenced a thief to know who he was. The thief cried, Lord, when it didn't look like the master had any power. Something about Jesus on the cross influenced a dying thief, a strong arm robber, a tough guy. probably would have been, you know, we probably would have been kicking and screaming in the place of Jesus, calling down the angels and fire from heaven and hell, wherever it come from. Jesus is on a mission to save the man next to him. And all those around him, to include those who nailed him, Nails in the hand, those who tried him on. The thief cries, Lord, when it doesn't look like Jesus has any power, any influence. But he cried, he called him Lord. My, my, my. Hey, we're at a time where people are looking at the church as though it's impotent, has no power. It's old folk. It's old traditional. We don't, we don't want any puppy. Uh, folk don't walking away from it, according to the reports. Less than 50% of Americans ascribe to church. They believe in something. They're not sure what. Because the church doesn't look good. Let's be honest. The history in America and pre-dating America didn't look good. Where people were trying to make you accept their interpretation and kill you if you didn't. Where they were mixed up with uh, the government and, 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 and where they charged people uh, penance for. It's church history predates America didn't look good and and church doesn't look good in America today when you have men who still standing in the pulpit and won't teach the love of Jesus in a way that inc includes everybody. Men, men and women in the pulpit who, who, who will not um, love people based upon color or skin, who will not care for people um, who are um, beat down, shot down, won't say a word about it, uh, though they love Jesus. Yes, the church doesn't look good, and a lot of people are walking away. But when it didn't look good, I said church, when it didn't look good is when the thief, the guy who knew he was a criminal, when it didn't look good, when it didn't act as if it had uh, power uh, or influence, that's when the thief cried, Lord. Help me, Holy Ghost. And all I'm trying to say to some of you, I'm just about ready to close. The, don't, don't generalize statements about the church. Every church is not like You need to find a church where the word of God is lived through the people in the church. And you know the love of God is there by behavior, conduct, and attitude. Listen, I'm, I'm going to close. I promise you I'm closing. It, it was when Jesus... He was His body was on the cross, and Paul tells us that uh, the church is the body. It, when the body was on the cross, uh, it's when the thief, when it didn't look good, it's when the thief, when it didn't look effective, it's when the thief, when it didn't look updated, it's when the thief said, Lord, uh, remember me. Because here's what the deal is. You may look bad, but you are not only older, you're not only wiser, but you're better than I am. I know I'm jacked up. So, so Lord, Lord, remember me. And, and the book says, he, he, the thief, um, the, 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 Jesus said to the thief, 
Look at here. He stopped dying on the cross. Take a minute to secure uh, the thief because the thief had uh, confessed, uh, yeah, his own messed upness. He told the other thief that we're guilty. He confessed his sin on the cross. Then he, he looked and said, Lord, remember me. He confessed with his mouth. And then he bleeds in his heart because he said, when you get in your kingdom, remember, remember me. The, the thief cried, Lord, when Jesus was on the cross, not when Jesus was wearing a crown. And the book says to me that Jesus stopped dying, stopped the hand of death, and, and, and said, this day thou shall be with me in paradise. In paradise, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So that evening, when Jesus crossed over into paradise, I believe I see Abraham said, I see Jesus, but who is that with him? I'm going to tell you who it was. It was every sinner who confessed Christ. It was every sinner who confessed Christ. Abraham said, well, I, I don't know him, but when you're with Jesus, it's all right because it, it is important who you with. It's important who you know because sometimes you can know people that won't get you anything, but there are some names you can call will be important and you need to be able to say, I know Jesus in the pardon of my sin. The thief cried, Lord, when the church didn't look good, when it looked like it was losing, when it looked like it was counted out. I'm going to tell you what Jesus said upon this rock. I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's a good time to become a member of the church the body of Jesus Christ, steady to show yourself a workman. Amen. Amen, amen. Steady to show yourself. And get to know Christ for yourself through his own words. That's what I did. And that's why I, I just thank God that he saved me, a messed up me, like the thief. Lord, when you get in your kingdom, Remember me. If you heard a word, word touch your spirit, I want you to. If you want to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, would you just repeat after me? You want to give your life. You've never been baptized, but you love the Lord. You know he's real. You believe that he died for your sins. You know. Because what, what God does is he um, touches you with the word. In sermonic deliver, he, 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 he pokes you and say, that's you right there. And it's just for you. The, the speaker don't know it, but it's God. He said, come unto me. I can help you with that. Amen. Amen. If that's you. You want to give your Lord, your your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can do it. I want you to do is repeat after me if you're being a candidate for pap baptism. Say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I accept the Lord Jesus Christ as my dead, buried, and resur resurrected Savior. I ask him to come into my heart. And own me as his child. Amen. If you did that, I welcome you to the household of faith. Amen. If you've already been baptized and you want to join in this ministry, the Lord was poking on you. That's where you need to be at the St. Luke Christian Church or some other church. I want you to join by going online to St. Luke Christian Church, St. Luke, uh, S-T-L-U-K-E-C-C-H-S-V dot org, 
There'll be a big sign, join us. Follow that prompt and someone will reach out to you real soon. Listen, don't panic in this pandemic. Don't rush out that too soon that now that we've gotten good news, take care of yourself. Till we meet again, this is Holy Week. We're fasting and praying. But I want you to remember in your fast, take a moment. Move out to yourself someplace, some quiet place. If you can sit by a running creek or a running river, just make yourself available. Say, so, Lord, I want to hear you. I want to hear you, God. I want to hear you. And let the Lord speak to your soul. You be blessed till we meet again.